almost everything can be really treated with food. So really going back to that and not making it as hard. Hello, welcome to another Rest, Eat, Move podcast. This is Kristen Brogan here, and I am with my soul sister, aka Aunt Paula, today. And we are going to do a really exciting interview. We are going to talk about healing our kids from the inside out. We're going to go through some of the 10 most common issues we see among kids and how we can treat them from not only a nutrition perspective, but also more of a holistic perspective. So I just wanted to introduce my Aunt Paula. You know, even though she's my aunt, we really are sisters reincarnated, I think. We both appreciate a good glass of wine, a strong cup of coffee, but we do love our superfoods. Yes, we do. So I just want to read a little bio of Aunt Paula so everyone can can kind of see what her background is, where she comes from. But Paula Johnson has a bachelor's degree in occupational therapy from Western Michigan University, and she's been working with children for over 30 years. She has three kids of her own. She's helped me with my two boys. Her passion for health and wellness led her to become a naturopathic doctor from Trinity College of Natural Health due to the increase in children with health-related issues such as autism, asthma, and allergies. Balance is the root of her philosophy, with digestive health being the hub of the body in which every health issue stems from. Paula specializes in food sensitivities, digestive health, and various children's health issues. She has a naturopathic practice in which she conducts consultations along with speaking in the community on children's health issues. Welcome, Aunt Paula. Wow, that was quite an introduction. That's so cool. So why don't you tell our audience just a little bit about who you are and then what you currently do. Okay. Um, Well, I've always had a passion for children. I've been working with children, like I said, for over 30 years. I'm currently working for um, Ingham Intermediate School District as an occupational therapist, and I work in a program called the Early On Program, which is a a program that services kids birth to three. And about 15 years ago, I got I just could not take the amount of medications that children are on. I was uh, dealing with their developmental disabilities, but at the same time, I thought there's got to be a better way. So that's kind of what piqued my interest to go back to school. So I kind of incorporate the naturopathic philosophy into my visits when children, they're talking to me about feeding issues or um, their child not being able to sleep or whatever that may be. I kind of come up with some different strategies to work on how can we address those kinds of things in a really holistic way, but an easy way for the family. So that's That's amazing. And I think that's what especially parents want. They want to be able to implement this in a very easy way. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's what we want to do today. You know, we we know people are, you know, short on time and they want to know how they can help their kids, you know, as quick as possible, but also from that more holistic approach where you're treating the whole body, right. the whole system. I exactly. think that's where we kind of get um, crazy with with certain specific remedies for certain things, but you know, really we want to heal the body as a whole unit. And, you know, we have the same philosophies where we really start with food first. I think food really is medicine. So I think, why don't we just go down? I have some of the most common issues that children are facing. I have just eight different issues. We can kind of go down the line and share maybe what the nutritional remedy would be and then also what maybe the holistic natural path remedy yeah um, will be, be just good. to That'd kind of fun. help people and you know before we get started aunt paula she goes by aunt paula <laughs> paula johnson she has a, a book called nature's child Heal, healing children from the inside out so you know just as a follow-up to this people can get your book where can they find your book They can find my book um, on Amazon is probably the the place you're going to see it the most. You can start, even when I go to my own publisher, I find it quicker on Amazon Uh than I do. Um, But it also, you can also email me and we can give that the email address at the end of the time because I can usually give a discount a little bit more even than Amazon. But just, just a, it's a very short little book. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very thin and I wrote it specifically because parents are busy and typically they as much as they want to learn about health natural health sometimes 
we don't have the time in our schedule to mm-hmm. do that. So if you have an ear infection or you've got a specific thing, you can just look it up and what are some things to do. Yep. The it's book is of- very easy to read and you can basically just use it as a, as a guidebook. And yeah. that's what I use it for. So why don't we start with um, a big issue I know you see on a regular basis is ADD, ADHD. So maybe talk a little bit about what the difference is and how you treat it in your world. Um, Well, ADD just means attention deficit disorder. Uh, It doesn't necessarily mean they have the the movement component to them. It's just difficulty with things like focusing. That's probably the biggest thing that we see with ADD. ADHD is what I typically see more of because I'm dealing with the littles and they are constantly on the move. Mm -hmm. Um, But so that stands for um, hype. attention deficit hyperactivity disorder Mm -hmm. and basically both of these issues are a neurotransmitter issue so they don't have quite enough serotonin in their brains they've got too much going on adrenaline firing cortisol those kinds of issues so the big thing is i always look at as a naturopath one of the main principles that we look at is what is the root cause of something so instead of in the allopathic world um Usually they look at symptoms and we give a medication to treat a symptom. Um, We also look at symptoms, but we really want to get to that root cause Mm -hmm. because otherwise if you just always look at symptoms, you're never going to be able to to get rid of this issue that's happening. So I usually start from there with families and I would say with something like ADD or ADHD, let's first talk about your diet. What's happening? Do we have a lot of stimulatory types Mm -hmm. of foods, candies, dyes? those kinds of things going on in the diet, those would be the first thing to kind of look at um, to avoid. And you probably have a lot more to say about that. And then I can get really specific on if there's some specific issues. A lot of times, usually the ADHD kids, it's, it hits sleep. They, they just, cannot sleep, can't mm-hmm. get their kids to sleep, can't get their kids to stay to sleep. Hmm. So what are some things to look at for that? And then I kind of get into, is it a deficit, like they don't have a, a specific nutrient, or is it a toxin? They've got something I that see. we need to take out. Okay. And I think, you know, yeah, you can always get to the root cause of something just by asking those type of questions. Yes. I mean, obviously, right. trying to avoid those artificial ingredients, the colors, the preservatives, you know, helping them to stay calm if they are having issues with sleep. Right. Do you incorporate Epsom salt baths? Or- right. I talk about Epsom salt because magnesium is the mineral that is the most relaxing of the body. Mm-hmm. As you guys talk on your podcast many all the time <laughs> about that. Um, so looking at foods that are rich in magnesium, mm-hmm. looking at an Epsom salt bath is a wonderful way of getting a lot of magnesium into the body at once yep. because you know your skin is your largest organ. So that's a great way to do it if you can't get mm-hmm. kids to eat those magnesium-rich foods. Um, sometimes I do recommend um, a homeopathic thing called Calm Fort, and yep. it's spelled F-O-R-T-E. Okay. And that is... Um, just a remedy that's given under the tongue and it kind of mimics magnesium. And sometimes that's the way to go with that. Um, okay. And I know you and I have talked many times about, we really got to get that brain calmed down. Mm-hmm. So it would be things like cod liver oil yes. and things to really yep. get get things going in terms of their neurotransmitters to either make their neurotransmitters mm-hmm. more or to get them just to calm. Well, and I think too, especially in our world, we tend to have kids in our family that have this hyperactive disorder, you know? So getting more exercise, I think, is very helpful. I know my three and a half year old, he sleeps so much better if he is moving, swimming, not watching movie shows all the time. So So yeah, and and interesting enough, you bring that up because probably the the consultation that I have to do for work is for what we call sensory kids, kids that have sensory processing disorders. And a lot of times those kids, that's it. They have to move all the time. So I explain the importance, and we call it a sensory diet, the importance of movement that's Mm -hmm. almost like you would give children that are diabetic food throughout the day. You give movement Movement breaks. Or breathing breaks or something We call it heavy work, work, you know, pushing heavy things, lifting heavy things, just getting, you know, the muscles and joints to work a lot harder. And that's why kids typically, you know, sleep so much better than the summer, than Mm -hmm. the winter, because they're getting a lot more activity naturally. Well, and my son, you know, he's done, heavy work really works for him. And I know you've gave him 
um, a tub of beans, yeah, dried beans, and yeah. then my son's Ruben. He yeah, just he loves it. He puts them in little jars and steps in it with his feet and puts his hands in there, and that's really helped. So, really good recommendations. I think magnesium rich foods, you know, cacao nibs, greens. Epsom salt is great if you're throwing it in the bath. Um, figs, dates. We have dates just kind of like candy in our... It's just a good right. alternative to some other sweetness. And then, you know, if if your kids do have these attention or learning disorders, cod liver oil is great because the brain, half of the brain is made up of fat. fat and it's made right. up of an omega-3 fat called DHA. And that's what cod liver oil is. So, you know, that's really where we start too is... Let's get your kids maybe a teaspoon or two of cod liver oil every single day. It doesn't yep. taste bad. And I think that's really great. So fan- fantastic. And, you know, the second thing I was going to say with um, different issues. So if we're touching on AD- ADD, I would say if we start to move into some other common issues, number two, maybe learning disorders, which I think has kind of the same type of remedies. It is. It's pretty much the same thing. It's really looking at a, it's a brain issue. Okay. So it's getting the communication in that brain to work over, and even speech issues. We've had so much success, um, and our speech therapists have been really pleased to see how much cod liver oil can help with speech. Because a lot of times when children understand if they have communication issues, They might understand everything, but they just can't get the words out. So it's like a processing issue. Right. And they've seen um, remarkable changes when the kids start to get some of those better fats in their diet. It's like the words are starting to come. It's like their brain is kind of clicking a little bit And that's probably less frustrating for them. Right. You know, I mean, they're keeping all this anxiety in because they can't really communicate what they're feeling. So I think that's really important. And, you know, kids are going to still watch TV. Yeah, probably oh, more yeah. than we once did and not have as much exercise. But, you know, there's some really good programs now that loop in meditation and breathing. And I mean, you can find all, all of these sorts things. Of those things yeah. So I think there's lots of options there. Um, if we move into the next kind of big issue, number three, GI issues. And I know you hit home with this because you talk a lot about digestive issues. So, can you just speak to this a little bit? And maybe we can even talk about the gut-brain connection, but yeah. seeing just different GI issues in, in your kids. Mm-hmm. So that, that's really the hub of naturopathic um, philosophy is looking at um, the hub of the body, which is the gut. And when we refer to the gut, we mean from your mouth to your anus. So every issue in between that. Mm-hmm. So um, the first thing when I start talking to families, um, one of the very first questions I ask is, how do they eliminate? They, they, they t- typically get very off guard by that. Like, why are you asking about that? And a lot of it is I have a lot of children that are not eating. So they have like picky eaters, right. things like that. And the first thing I say is, how often do they have a bowel movement? And a lot of times they'll say, oh, once a week, or things that surprise me. And right. I'd be like, well, let me just talk about the train philosophy. It's a train in and train out. If you take something in through uh-huh. your mouth, <laughs> you have to have something coming out the other end. Yes. And if you don't, there's always going to be some kind of issue going on. And we a lot of what I see is reflux as a result of that, because they are mm. literally loaded and so now it has to come out the other end. Uh-huh. So a lot of times it's as simple as that. Looking at are they too loose, or are they too are they constipated, or they go link go back and forth, and what is the reason? Do they ha- not have enough gut good gut bugs? Do they not have enough water? Mm-hmm. Do they not have enough fiber? Right. So just even looking at you know are they eating a lot of processed foods? So again, going back to that diet piece, mm-hmm. what what are, what are we eating? Those kinds of things. Okay. Um, because typically, what I I come when the kids come to me. They're already on Miralax, and there's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I'm trying to bash Miralax, but I don't think we want that to be the answer to every constipation issue. It's just kind of fixing the symptoms. Again, it's fixing the symptom, and then often kids can get very um, dependent on it. Okay. So maybe doing flax seeds or something. Right, exactly. Real fiber. And, you know, I I had the experience with my own daughter who Natalie had... um, 
you know, when she was in seventh grade, she all of a sudden was having all these gut issues. Well, it was definitely her diet. She was eating a lot of pasta, Mm -hmm. mac and cheese, a lot of dairy, and then a lot of nothing else. So it was kind of an interesting thing because most kids don't want to listen to their parents. So I kind of just said, well, why don't you see what works for you? Mm -hmm. And we started with the supplements first and she really liked the flax. And we would do that like in a pomegranate um, juice. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we started with the flat, the, she would also do the cod liver oil. Those two things combined were almost amazing for gut health. That really, really helped her change things. And then she was more interested in changing the diet part. So that yep. really did help. So sometimes I have to look at the situation and I either I start with the food if families are willing to go that way mm-hmm. or I start with the the supplements right. and we'll go that way. But And I think that's why the superfoods are so powerful because it's almost like if you do nothing else, you do start to see results with we talk about the cod liver oil, right? You know, the wheatgrass, the spirulina crella and then the flax or the chia. So that's that's obviously you want to start with kind of the basics, fruit and vegetables and right. live foods versus dead foods. But I think that those are really powerful. And, you know, in our world, we see a lot about this gut brain connection, which you kind of hit on. I mean, a lot of times people that have IBS or having digestive related issues, they are experiencing anxiety or they're yes. tightly wound right? or some, they have too much stress or something along those lines. So again, back to the exercise piece, just kind of dealing with everything as right. one unit. Right. And I can tell you a story that's kind of indicates, kind of shows you kind of how that happens. But I work with a lot of autistic children mm-hmm. and they have a very limited diet. Um, and one of the, the foods of choice is dairy milk. Um, and I can tell you, I've seen this happen over and over again. Milk initially will have kind of a sed- sedative kind of quality to it. So the kids crave it. They crave what it does to their brain. Uh-huh. Not necessarily what it tastes like, but what it does to their brain. Interesting. And so I would get these kids that would start narrowing their food choices. They might start with 10, then go down to five, then go down to three, and they end up with maybe just drinking milk. So they're drinking a gallon or more of milk a day. And I would tell the, the family, I said, I wanna see how this is going. So I'd see them drink their milk, they'd climb up on mom or dad, they snuggle in, they'd start to settle down. And then all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, boom, uh-huh. They're hit. They're just hyperactive, and they would go through that whole thing, and then they would go. They'd want. They go to the fridge and point, want more milk. They do it again, and the oh, cycle would go on uh-huh. all day long. And if that doesn't illustrate the gut brain connection, right. that that was one of the things that really stuck out to me. I'm like, That's wow, amazing. we've got to break yes. yeah. break that 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 habit right there. So yeah. And what else would you do if some, if you had a kid that was struggling with autism, what other things would you say from maybe even a food's perspective? Well, I would, it gets really, really, really complicated because it's a lot of times how the foods look, Uh how they, you know, what color they are, that kind of thing. Yes. So kind of looking at just upgrading, you know how we always talk Upgrade. about on, in um, on Target Living about yes. just kind of, you know, maybe if they're eating just Oreos all day long, maybe you get a healthier Oreo. Exactly. and then Better kind ingredients. Of better ingredients so that it's mm-hmm. not so processed and kind of work backwards. But it is a mm-hmm. process. We try to figure out where they're mm-hmm. at with foods and then try to match up with something a little bit healthier and then kind of go from there. And maybe limiting the dairy or doing some sort of the other dairy replacement. The dairy and wheat is typically, um, again, that's because they don't have usually have good gut integrity. Right. And once that gut health gets a little bit better, they the foods don't react to their mm-hmm. gut as much. But typically when I start with most people or children, they have they're eating foods like that that's irritating the gut and then it kind of goes from there yes and i kind of see usually people are either dairy heavy or gluten heavy Uh uh-huh they might have both but you'll see one or the other and i start with the one that is really the one they're really craving all the time okay yeah and you know especially with gluten you know it's a protein molecule found in wheat and i think many Mm -hmm. people they don't necessarily have gluten intolerance. They just have this weak digestion. They can't yes. break it down. So right. yes, like you said, if you make your gut healthier, you can break down some of these foods a little bit easier and then it all kind of connects. I mean, we know 
when we eat a bad meal, we don't feel good. Right. Right. You know, it is all connected. And I think it all goes back to, to live foods versus dead foods. So the number one way we tell people to improve their gut health or digestion or acid reflux or whatever it is, autoimmune issues is to eat whole foods. So think about live living foods that will rot, you know, think about an apple versus apple jacks. Correct. You know, we eat a yes. lot of dead foods, which will never change. I mean, French fries and processed foods and things that are in a can or a gel or a right. bar or whatever. So, yeah, I think just going back to that. And it's it's simple. It really is simple it's, information. It's, it's so much more simpler than, you know, I think sometimes people think I'm going to give them this like <laughs> this great answer and sometimes it's like the simplest thing uh-huh. i've we've cured constipation so easily just mm-hmm. by adding more water exactly you know right. things like that yeah or getting more fiber in the diet you know uh-huh. like you said an apple an apple is a prebiotic yes. it's wonderful yes you know because parents always want to go right away should i get them on a probiotic should i do and i do recommend probiotics a lot of times if i we can't get right. these kids to eat certain things but you know, sometimes you have to back up and think, okay, what about a pre what, what What can we Real feed foods. those good bugs? Yeah, whole yeah. foods. And I mean, yeah, you're getting those pre and probiotics that will really fuel that gut health from, from live foods. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with taking a probiotic. Sometimes right. maybe once a week I'll take a probiotic just if I know I'm not getting the foods I need to or if I'm traveling or I'm on the go or, you right. know, it's not right. going to hurt you, but you'll get that through foods, of course. Yes. Okay, so let's move in. And, and a lot of these things you'll probably to our audience, they'll see kind of a a pattern here. But if we move on, number four, I have allergies or food intolerances. Yeah. So allergies, um, you know, they're rampant nowadays. I mean, kids, the the food allergy or the food intolerances, and let me explain kind of what the difference is too, because most people have food intolerances, not food allergies. An allergy is what we call an IgA response. And what that means is that you eat the food, you have an immediate response, whether it's hives Mm -hmm. or an um, antiphylactic kind of where you, you know, get swelling, you can't breathe. That's an actual allergy. Okay. Whereas an intolerance is, it can be a delayed food intolerance. You eat it, you don't have an issue, but maybe two days later you have an issue or it becomes kind of a chronic issue. Mm-hmm. It, it ends up showing up in eczema or other kinds I of things. See. Um, so a food intolerance, typically a lot of times I'll start with the big ones, which would be um, more your processed dairy foods mm-hmm. or your gluten um, foods. We'll start there and then we kind of work backwards, you know, and look at, at the, the, you know, the most common sensitivities which can be like eggs and things like that Mm -hmm. but a lot of times it it goes back to just like we were talking before that gut integrity if the gut is is having difficulty that's typically what happens and then what you have happening is what's called leaky gut where now we've got perforations Mm -hmm. in the small intestine things are leaking into the bloodstream the immune system then gets involved and says alert alert we have an allergy now Mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily an allergy per se it's a gut issue right so when i a lot of times i'll see a profile in a kid and they'll say oh they're allergic to 10 things i'll think No, they're not allergic to 10 things. They have a leaky gut. And so now their body is responding to everything. Uh So we have to kind of back up, clean the gut up, and and then start going down that path and try to eliminate where the irritants are and try to build in where Mm -hmm. we can do some supplements to heal the gut. And I think that's a great way to explain it, just the leaky gut. You know, Mm -hmm. it becomes inflamed, and then you do have that kind of immune response, autoimmune type of response. So it makes sense. And I hear that a lot. You know, I just did an allergy food intolerance test and I'm allergic to all the things I love. And a lot of times it's like those common foods you're eating all the time show up. Like I remember going to years ago and, you know, I was eating my oatmeal on the run all the time and therefore I was eating a lot of raisins. Well, raisins came back as one of those trigger foods, probably just because I ate it already All the so time. much. So, right. you know, right. it. you got to be careful with some of those Well, tests. and then that's a good point, too. Like, that's another strategy I'll say to families is to do some what they call food rotation. Mm-hmm. So maybe introduce a food. If you know it's a very kind of 
inflammatory food to this person, maybe have it every four days, right. not every single day. Because yeah. sometimes what we do is we like something and we eat it over and over and over. And, <laughs> yes. and I'm, a, I'm, oh, our family, well, that's we live by that. Yes. we really do. So, um, so you have to kind of you have to mix it up. Yes, definitely once in a while. Yep. And variety. It's yes. a spice of life. You need yes. to do that. Everyone's going to get bored when it comes to food if we're not having variety. So yeah, I think that's great. Okay. And then let's move on. Number five, I have ear infections. So what? I, this is a big thing. I mean, both of my boys have had ear infections. You know, what would you say to parents out there? Number one, dairy. Uh-huh. Most people that are getting constant, re- what I see in my practice is constant reoccurring ear infections, which then lead to PE tubes, which are the the tubes that they put Mm -hmm. in your ear to make sure the eustachian tube can drain um, correctly. But when you think about what, and I'm not here to bash milk. It sounds like I'm I'm being a a cow milk basher, and I'm not. (laughs) Um, But there's just some people that it it, dairy just causes a lot of mucus in their body because it's a clogger. I always call dairy's a clogger. Yes. So if you think about your eustachian tubes, Mm -hmm. you get that milk it it like the congestion starts happening in the whole head yeah. and then their ears clog and then they get an ear infection so i look at the diet first if they want to see if they can get that to stop being a pattern mm-hmm. and then number two is instead of putting them on an antibiotic i usually suggest doing some kind of ear oil and that okay. you can find in the health food store there's usually um Garlic is nature's mm-hmm. antibiotic, so it's usually heavy in garlic and another herb called mullen. So those two combine help to reduce the bacteria in the ear, and they they work amazing. Yes. So sometimes you don't have to go to the um, to the antibiotic um, right away. You can try those kinds of Great. things first. That's amazing. Um, and the other thing I'll mention about an antibiotic, the reason we try to avoid an antibiotic is because of that gut health piece Mm -hmm. because antibiotics will strip away the bad bacteria but also the good bacteria and then it leaves the overgrowth of yeast to happen and then you start getting all those gut issues right yes so that's the reason not trying to badmouth antibiotics either there is a purpose for them Mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be something to go on to start with yeah Yeah. and i think i mean it Sometimes if those ear infections are so bad and they're reoccurring, right. you may need an antibiotic, but starting with these other things first. I've right. even dropped breast milk in my son's ear. The snot sucker is really great because oh, yes. you're getting rid of That's, some of that uh, drainage. You're clearing it out, yeah. kind of getting rid of yeah. that mucus in there. And ear infections are hor- horrible because they lead to poor sleep. And, then, yes. and, and the antibiotics, I always try to have that be my last resort because... I'm not necessarily so scared about the antibiotic, but the diaper rash that comes with it. Because, because again, you're getting rid of all that good bacteria, and now what happens? All the yeast comes out, and it causes the rash, mm-hmm. and it causes all that uncomfortableness. And yeah, yep. it, yeah, we yeah. had an ear infe- a bad ear infection in our house for ten days, but then we had diaper rash issues for two months yes. after that, wow. and we were on all sorts of creams and potions, and it was right. A nightmare. So yeah, I think there's there's always kind of a, a first way to heal yeah. the body. Right. Like, just to right. kind of keep them open mind with that. And then moving into number six, I have listed here skin issues. So with kids, I know you talked a little bit about eczema. Right. Eczema is probably the thing I see the most. Mm-hmm. And the reason we see that is you have to, you think about the eliminating organs. And so you've got your bowels, you've got, you know, your skin, Mm -hmm. you've got your breathing. So when I see in allergies, eczema and asthma, that's a red flag that the body is screaming to try to detoxify. Mm -hmm. They're trying to push that stuff out, one through the bowels, through the, if you get eczema or um, asthma and then through the skin. So... Mm -hmm. Skin issues is de- directly related, to, again, to what you're eating. Um, and a lot of times, like um, doing more alkalizing foods, more foods that are not so acidic to, to kind of make the skin angry. Yes. So just to kind of really do more of those fruits and vegetables and things that are more alkalizing mm-hmm. like that can kind of calm everything down with the skin. Mm-hmm. Doing, like we talked before, Epsom salt baths. I've also done baking soda baths yeah. because baking soda is so alkalizing. Mm-hmm. It will pull all the kind of the toxins out of the skin. 
Um, and then just kind of, again, looking at that diet, what are they doing as far as there is an herb called lobelia that sometimes can help when you have asthma. Okay. Um, but for eczema per se, it's, it's, again, like my book says, healing from the inside out. You really mm-hmm. have to go back to what is the source of what's happening right. that's causing this eczema. Yep. And it's usually a food sensitivity of some kind mm-hmm. that they you know, are having an issue with. So I see eczema all the time. Now, my son, who's eight months, he's ju- mostly he's just getting breast milk. Yes. And he's got some eczema mm-hmm. on his arms, I'm noticing, and... You know, it could be where we were giving him bass for a while, a lot of bass, because he had this bad diaper rash. And so we were keeping him clean. It could have dried out his skin. He's not eating much food. So what would you say to to that? To, to boost some of that? Just to help him with his eczema, because we can't really go from a diet perspective. Right, because you're still just doing... Breast milk. Just breast milk. Probably looking at your diet Mm -hmm. and really zoning in to see maybe you want to do a ton of alkalizing foods right now and just do that or do a juice cleanse or do something where you're kind of letting go of maybe Mm -hmm. some things that you're passing to him. Um, It's usually not as strong through breast milk, Mm -hmm. but it still can pass. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, good to know. So you're saying I need more uh, Epsom salt bass in my life, too. Right, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and then talk about um, warts. You know, um, you were telling me some of homeopathic type remedies for a war or some of these yeah. kind of things that you see. Um, yeah, skin issues a lot of times, like when it's specific, like warts or moles or Mm -hmm. like things that look funky and weird, obviously always go to your dermatologist and get that checked out to make sure something's not right. But if it's just your, your things like, you know, as I get older, I have a lot more skin tags and Uh things like that. Okay. So, um, one of the things I really like to use, I was telling you this before we went on is called C herb and C with like a capital C, like the letter C, mm-hmm. and then herb. And it's basically a um, herbal mixture. It's it's a dark, pasty kind of thing. It kind of mm-hmm. have a, it kind of has a weird smell. You put it on the area. I had a giant mole on my chest years ago, and I just didn't want to go and get uh-uh. that removed. Right. So I did the C herb. You put it on, and then you use a waterproof bandage over it, and then the body attacks it. Because wow. a mole is nothing more than a virus encapsulated with skin. Huh. So almost like a tumor. Hmm. So it basically went after it. And when I, two weeks later, I pulled off the Band-Aid and there, it was it just was... this big crevice. And then it, my skin just Healed. filled it back in. It was wow. really interesting how it worked. But anything suspicious on my body, I'm slapping that stuff yeah. on. Um, <laughs> and where do you find that? Um, you uh, you can find it on the internet. Okay. Just, just Google C Herb. It comes in a really tiny little... Um, bottle, but you don't need very much. So you just use a toothpick and you just cover the area where you need it covered. Okay. And then you put a, like a waterproof band in it. Um, There is also a remedy called Thunja, which is a homeopathic remedy. So it's T-H-U-J-A and Thunja will get rid of things that are kind of fungal-ish more often. Mm -hmm. Um, And you take that by underneath your tongue So homeopathy works in a way that it is what they call energy medicine um, in the sense that light cures like. So if you have something, um, just to give you an example, um, uh, like arsenic, which is a poison, right? But they, with homeopathy, what they will do is they take the substance and they, um, they shake it and they make it into basically no, there's like no substance left. It's just the energy of the plant or the mineral. And then that is used to, to as the treatment. Okay. But you have to have a background in homeopathy. But so you just basically, you look up what your issue is and it'll give you the homeopathic, okay. yes. homeopathic remedy. But they're very safe. I like to use them with children and mm-hmm. babies. Yep. Um, you could take a whole bottle of something and mm-hmm. it wouldn't hurt the child because, again, there's no substance in it. Mm-hmm. It's just basically the energy of that substance. So And, you know, when my son has, you know, he'll, he'll get three different vaccines at one time, I use the rescue remedy. That's a homeopathic. That's a, that's a version of a... a, a, a it's a little bit different, but it is homeopathic, but it's it deals with emotional 
kinds of issues. Okay. So that's or in my book that's, too. And that's a good calming mm-hmm. thing to do. Well, I'll put a little lavender oil on the injection site just to kind of pull right. out some of those things. So those are the flower essences. So what she's um, speaking of specifically, it's called Rescue Remedy or Five Flower Remedy. Okay. And it is um, one of the back flower remedies. Back flowers. Okay. And back flowers are to treat emotional issues. Okay. And they work amazing with kids. And just to reiterate, all of this information is in Paula's yeah. book, Nature's Sounds Child. Little- so. Don't feel like you have to remember all of these things. The health food store has a lot of these homeopathic. They have it all out there, remedies. and you can just ask questions. And I'll, yes. like even the the flower remedies, they'll say you know what it's for. You know nervousness yes. or right you know, different yep. things makes it easy. Right. And I when I was a retail dietitian at a, it was almost like a Whole Foods grocery store. We had a whole section on naturopathic, homeopathic remedies, and I learned so much about it just because it is just another form of treatment, you know? Right. And if it it's works, just, yeah, it works. It's it's just, it's. I mean, I've got all my kids on it uh-huh. because um, especially the, the five flower or um, rescue remedy, they, what's in there is the five different um treatments for stress so I call them I used to when the kids were little I called them their stress drops Mm -hmm. and (laughs) my kids use those all the time because it's it's just so different than having to take a medication right and I'm not saying you shouldn't take a medication but this might be an alternative to that so when you're stressed you just take a couple drops under your tongue they make them in mints they make them in a spray they make them in a cream yes so it just it's easy to use and 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 it works on all ages. That's the cool all thing. All ages. these things. And I always would, Aunt Paula's like on my speed dial on my phone because I'm like, can I get this to my eighth month old? Yeah. Yes, because it is all, it's natural and it's not going to hurt them. And, right. And even They're my, so gentle because right. that's the one thing about homeopathy is it's very gentle. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to get... Um, the reaction that you would maybe from a medication. Right. So you, where you'd have to really watch your dosing and that kind of thing. Yes. This is a very gentle approach. That's well, why and even my husband has a lot of stress with work. And with COVID, he works out of the home now. Mm-hmm. And he probably works even longer hours. And so I just bought him the rescue remedies. I brought him the little candies. Yeah. He takes one little candy a day um, to get those, you know, the, the flower essence, the stress. Right. Right. Kind of things in there. And it it really does help him. Yeah. Right. And it's a subtle, it's a subtle Subtle. thing. It's not like a woo, but it's it's very, it's subtle. (laughs) There's other things for that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. And if we move on, I know we touched on this, of course, and you obviously can see a theme here. Everything kind of starts with the gut, getting the gut healthier foods. Um, But what about asthma? Let's really speak to this. So asthma is an indication. It's... um, What's interesting in, in naturopathic medicine, we have a we have a main organ and we have a sister organ. So the main organ, actually, let me back up. The sister organ will always protect the main organ. So for like, to give you an example of that, like liver and gallbladder. Gallbladder is going to take the hit for the liver. We can't live without our liver, but we can live without uh-huh. the gallbladder. Okay. So that's an indication when your liver is struggling your gallbladder takes the head. Wow. So same with um, the lungs. The lungs, you can't live without your lungs, but you somewhat can live without your bowels. Uh So the first thing, and people think I'm absolutely crazy when I say when they come to me with asthma, we're going to do a colon cleanse. Mm -hmm. We're going to clean out the colon because the sister organ needs some help because it's trying to support the main organ which is the lungs and i know i'm going off in my natural no i love this weirdness yes. right now but <laughs> it's amazing how that helps mm-hmm. it's amazing how when you have a good bowel movement how well you can breathe interesting so it's it's really important to make sure that you're treating the whole body and mm-hmm. so with asthma that's the first thing i do is let, let's talk about your elimination let's make sure that's going really mm-hmm. well then let's talk about your diet and see are you eating a lot of inflammatory foods are you eating those cloggers right the i mean yes. i know i'm i do it's sound okay. like the dairy nazi <laughs> right now but it's it's just uh-huh. it does it really can cause a lot of mucus in yes. the lungs yeah so and even if it's not forever maybe mm-hmm. you want to do um, a juice cleanse for okay. a couple days to kind of just get some of those yeah. those you know um, those 
fluids that we need to detoxify right. out of you. Um, and then kind of looking at, there is a, like I said, I mentioned lobelia is a, a wonderful herb that really, really supports the mucosal lining of the lungs. And I use it all the time. They make it in different remedy style and mm-hmm. tinctures herbally. And also um, you'll go in and look for something for asthma and usually wow. lobelia is in it. Okay. So that's a really good one to use for that. Yeah, and personally, I struggled with asthma in high school. I went on this rebel phase where I got a job at Johnny Rackett's Burger Restaurant. Yeah, I yeah. was living on milkshakes, and all of a sudden, got asthma. And I was putting on an inhaler, and luckily, you know, you and my dad, and we said, okay, well, let's talk about asthma. What is it? Inflammation of the airways. Mm-hmm. Well, let's reduce that inflammation, that mucus buildup that I was getting from burgers and milkshakes and french fries and all these things and then my asthma magically went away and I haven't ever had any issue since so it really has a lot to do with that inflammation and reducing the amount of dairy foods that cause that that build up and then of course alkalizing foods which the food target if you eat closer to the center of the food target that's all the foods we're talking about the alkalizing right. foods alkalizing foods which are usually pretty whole uh-huh. whole foods that are right. generally more fruits and vegetables right well and i think when we, everyone starts eating healthier they're going to limit gluten anyway they're going to yeah, limit dairy absolutely. i mean gluten doesn't really live in the center of the food target and a lot of grains don't actually have gluten it's in a lot of processed foods so just cleaning up the diet and again yeah. you know all this really is simple information it's just not always easy. And yeah. I think it becomes easy when we start taking these small steps and living Or just healthier. improving like the quality. I, I mean, I can speak to your right. beautiful bread. Like I don't eat bread, but I'd eat your bread and I have not one problem with it. But if I eat, uh, you know, right. like a just commercialized bread, I have yep. a horrible time with it. Yes. I didn't have any problems in Italy either. Right. And I, so now I've been doing a lot more research and I'm finding that United States uses 10 times the amount of glycosate, which is Roundup on their wheat products. Thanks. So I'm wondering is... Maybe we don't have a gluten sensitive society. Maybe we have a glycosate. Possibly, society. yes. I don't know. Makes well, I mean, sense. I don't know what the chicken or the egg is, right. but all I know is that typical wheat has right. been used, lots of chemicals are on it. Well, so. and I think it all goes back to cooking more meals at home, knowing right. what you're putting in. Nothing's off limits if it's real. I mean, yeah. we, we eat more bread in our house than we ever have before because. I've mastered sourdough bread and, and it's three ingredients it. and it's amazing. It's amazing. And, <laughs> and it doesn't make you feel bad. So it's like a magic bread. And it tastes but, so good. And that's why if you're choosing bread, try to do sourdough because it is made with that starter, which is almost a natural probiotic. So, right. you know, everything can fit in a healthy diet, just yes. making sure it's better quality, which is very easy for people to upgrade versus eliminate, I think. And then the last thing we'll touch on is just colds, you know, the mm-hmm. common cold. Like, right. what would you say to that? Um, I would say, first of all, make sure you're, again, eating a pretty, like a pretty balanced diet or mm-hmm. trying to get a lot of nutrients in because really colds are out there everywhere. Yes. And um, one of the things I do like to use for children, I can tell you, with colds is some kind of essential oil on the bottom of their feet. Mm. So in cold and flu season, I really like my thieves oil on the bottom of my, you know, my feet, Mm -hmm. my kids feet, because it's an easy thing to do. um, And it kind of will protect against viruses and bacteria. Um, But other things like elderberry, it's an easy thing to get into kids because Mm -hmm. it tastes good it's right. just like a really yummy berry taste and it they tastes make suckers really good. and all sorts yes, of stuff they make stuff. all sorts of things like that so looking at really nutrient dense foods and then mm-hmm. anything with zinc in it vitamin c okay. obviously all the immune builder mm-hmm. can, types of vitamins and herbs are all gonna be okay. really good for that wow i've learned so much i mean i use your book on a regular basis and i I recently washed it in the washing machine. <laughs> so now yeah. I have another copy. But, you know, that's sometimes we have this mom brain because oh, yeah. we're all clogged up and we it. need these yeah. remedies ourselves. So just to kind of go through this, you know, we talked about eight big issues. Number one, ADD, ADHD. Number two, learning disorders, um, which kind of goes with, with that ADD. 
three GI issues, so digestive related issues. We talked about number four, allergies, food intolerances, number five, ear infections, six, skin issues, warts, eczema, seven, asthma, and then eight, we talked about cold. So we just wanted to talk about some of those big common issues that we, we see among kids and We've thrown out some resources. The Food Target's a great resource. The Target to Table Cookbook, if you want to start eating healthier. Nature's Child is Paula's book. Any other resources you tell you tell to parents out there or anyone that really wants to heal their kids from the inside out? Um, yeah, that. I, I I guess I would go back to like what you were saying, just even looking up. Keep it as simple as you can. If you mm-hmm. have a, I, there's a few podcasts I really like. One is Wise Traditions. Um, there's another one called Simple Farmhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, start Googling natural things because I think as a mom, as you know, it's really hard to read, isn't it? Oh my gosh. And yes. so I learn a lot of things just because I'm driving a lot with my job and I listen to these natural, I mean, I'm always in search of new right. information too. So, um, as far as a specific resource, I would say probably the, the book, the book, yes. the eat rest. Yeah. So that book, um, and like I said, my book does have the natural remedies in it, but just really getting back to basics. Mm-hmm. I think really what people need to understand is that everything can, almost everything can be really treated with food. Yes. So really going back to that and not making it as hard as you think right. it, it has. It doesn't really have to be as if you just no. go back to that. Um, you can find me at phoulihan at hotmail.com and I can spell that out. It's P for Paula, H-O-U-L-E-H-E-N at hotmail.com if anybody has specific questions that they want me to answer if this brought anything up i'd be happy to do that too i love that you've referenced your hotmail um Mm -hmm. email address and then also saying you can find everything on the internet i love that i love those words so this is amazing it's a gives our listeners a different perspective just from you know our rest eat move information we kind of dive a little bit deeper on these naturopathic homeopathic remedies which is um really exciting a whole nother world out there so we'll have paula again we're gonna um have her on another podcast where we're really diving into how to feed our kids um you know babe led weaning whatever it is where you kind of want to get your kids eating more superfoods um we're gonna talk about that so stay tuned for next time thank you so much for being on this this is so fun we always have so much fun she really is my soul sister Um, we don't Kristen always. and I could go on forever. We could talk all day, <laughs> but we've been told to keep this very short. So hopefully, this was right yeah. straight to the point. But thank you for having. You're welcome. This was really being fun. on thank here you. and coming over yeah. here. So um, stay tuned for the next podcast with my dear Aunt Paula. Ah, so sweet. <laughs> it's so fun.